Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new closed loop liquid CPU cooler from Antec. This is the Antec Cooler H201250. We'll start off with a look at the retail box and since this is oh so brand new it still has the plastic on it so let me peel that off. But this is a CLC, our closed loop cooler, closed loop liquid CPU cooler. So if you're not into water cooling or if you have wanted to get into water cooling but that's a little bit too intimidating to build your own custom loop. This one is all enclosed, so no, ma no maintenance is required. It comes pre-filled. You have a big old 240 millimeter radiator, as well as a block slash pump uh, that sits atop your CPU. For compatibility, we have a list right here. Uh, for Intel sockets, we have LGA 775, 1150, 1155, 1156, 136, and 2011. If you're purchasing a new computer, you're probably most interested in socket 1150 and 2011. Those are kind of the current ones right now. For AMD, you have FM1, FM2. Also, FM2 Plus would be included there since it uses the same mounting method. Uh, also, AM2, AM2 Plus, AM3, and AM3 Plus. So, pretty much just about any socket that's currently available on the market, you should be able to attach this cooler to and get some really good CPU temperatures. We have some pictures down here, but those have some more information about them on the back. So. I'm going to go ahead and talk about those here. Uh, first off, you get a copper cold plate that's optimized for thermal conduction. Uh, you also get two extra large pumps. So whereas a lot of uh, these units will have a single pump that's uh, right next to the cold plate, these bring the pumps out to basically on the back of the fans, which uh, gives you two pumps for one thing, and it also takes that heat generating elements away from the cold plate. So uh, it kind of gives you a couple benefits there. Uh, you also have two integrated PWM fans, and I always prefer PWM fans for case fans because they're going to be able to spin at a wider variety of RPMs, and uh, it's, it's just better. Uh, you get an RGB LED that's on the Antec uh, logo on the actual uh, block, and uh, that LED can be customized, the color that, that it will show, and it will also, by default, change color based on the temperature. Uh, you also get some software you can install from Antec. Uh, it provides essential tools to control and monitor the cooler H201250, so uh, you can sort of see a small diagram of it right there. I'm not going to be demonstrating that today, but you can see the uh, RPMs of the pump, for example, as well as the liquid temperature. Uh, and then over here you can see the dual pump orientation for moving all that liquid through the radiator to keep everything nice and cool. For some other specs, we have those right here. So uh, starting at the top for fan speed, you have a variable fan speed from six, 600 to 2400 RPMs. Uh, radiator, dim radiator dimensions, uh, 280 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 27 millimeters thick. Fan and pump dimensions right there, 120 by 50. Uh, cold plate is one inch. Uh, tubing length is 11.8 inches. Uh, the entire thing weighs 2.9 pounds. And the cooling liquid is safe, environmentally friendly, and anti-corrosive. Inside we have some packaging, so uh, a bit of foam on top to keep everything protected. We have the Antec Cooler H201250 installation guide, so that has a list of all the parts and that has visual, ooh, yes, visual diagrams of the installation process, which is always extremely helpful. Uh, it's also listed in multiple languages, which includes English, French, uh, German, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, uh, it looks like Taiwanese or Chinese, and uh, SCN, which I'm incredibly sorry, but I don't know what SCN is, but there it is. Okay. Uh, next up, we have some other accessories. So since I mentioned there is software included, you get that on a disc. That is the Antec Cooler H2O Grid software. You can install that off the disc. I'm guessing you could also download it uh, from the Antec website, since that's usually how that works. Um, but don't take my word for that. I haven't double checked it. Uh, that's pretty much all that's in the box except for the unit itself. I do have a bunch of accessories right here. Let me get these laid out so I can kind of tell you what is what. So I have all of these accessories figured out for you guys. So let me explain to you what is what. First off, we'll start with the back plate. This goes behind your motherboard and particularly if your case does not have a motherboard uh, cutout behind the back plate, uh, you definitely want to install this first before you install the motherboard in your case. This is a universal backplate though. It will work for AMD and Intel sockets. Uh, if you're on an AMD platform, this side will go against the motherboard and that has sort of that rectangu rectangular layout for AMD sockets. If you're using an Intel platform, this side will go against the motherboard and they've also given you a bit of an indentation actually, which is over on this side. Um, which is the side you'd be able to see, which tells you which sockets each of these three holes lines up for. There's a socket 775, 1155, 1156, and then 1366 for the outside. If you're going with an Intel socket 2011 motherboard, you do not need to use this backplate because it has a universal backplate, which is super sweet. Uh, they do also have a universal 
uh, ring mount for the actual uh, block itself. So this goes on there, not to put too fine a point on it, but uh, basically you have some adjustments that you can do with this thing. So you can slide these little guys on the side, and they do have some notches to kind of hold them in place. So you just kind of give them a little bit of a wiggle like this. There we go. And they kind of slide up there. So you put them in that position. Again, if you're going for uh, an AMD mounting solution, you go in this sec uh, to this side. If you had an Intel mounting solution, again, they have put labels on here. Uh, you can also reference that in the manual. So it says AMD on this side, and it says Intel on that side. And then once you have those in place, you can use these little guys to actually hold them. I'm going out of order here, but I wanted to show you guys how this works. So basically, you get it lined up like so. You take this little thing. It's curved since this is circular. Pop it in from the back like this. And then that will hold that in place to give you a much easier mounting uh, scenario when you're actually mounting this to the board. But there is the uh, ring solution, and it does have four of those little rubber uh, inserts to hold the different sides in place. Since I'm talking about rubber inserts, let's continue there. There's the fourth one. You also get rubber adhesive. There you go. Uh, also very handy. So this is going to be used on the back plate itself. Simply push uh, right in there or on this side, you can put it right in there. That will help this to stick to the back of your motherboard, which is going to be very helpful when you're actually mounting the block and uh, installing the screws and everything. Okay, next up, we have labeled baggies. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it when they label the little baggies and it's not just one big group all together. So as you can see, three different mounting solutions. If you're gonna use the AMD original backplate, you do have that option as well, uh, and you can use those screws for that. If you're not gonna use that, and you're going with the other AM, or with the included backplates, or Intel 775, 1150, 1155, 1156, and 1366, you wanna use those screws. And then if you're going for Intel socket 2011, you wanna use those. All labeled, okay. These screws here are all for mounting the fans and or the radiator. So you have some long ones that can push through the fans and into the radiator. You have short ones that just go straight through the case and into the radiator. Again, depending on your, uh, your fan configuration that you're setting up and whether or not you're gonna add fans onto this to give yourself a push-pull configuration, you may be using various configurations of those screws. Finally, we have these little plugs. And uh, let me just show you these. Basically, these uh, push into the back of that uh, universal back plates, this little guy right here, and they are sort of uh, like a hex angle on that. So once you've chosen your socket, you pop that in like so, and that gives you uh, the grooves that the screws are going to screw into from the other side. Anyway, all of this, of course, is clearly detailed in the product manual. And that's about all I'm going to give you guys as far as installation instructions for now. It's not too difficult. I've done a lot of these CPU coolers before, uh, the closed loop ones in particular. And I think uh, Antex set you up with a pretty good solution for getting the installation taken care of because it can be a little bit complex uh, when you're building a computer system, especially if it's for the first time. Okay, let's move on to the cooler itself. We'll start off with the tubing since it's right here and exposed. Uh, Antec actually sources this tubing from a scuba gear company, so it's pretty cool. Very flexible, of course, waterproof since there is liquid flowing through it. Uh, and again, you get uh, over nine inches of length on that, so you can uh, position this in various positions within your case. Uh, and then also you have a group of cables here. Let me quickly untie those for you guys so I can show you what is what. You're going to have a power cable, uh, which is going to give you power to the pump. These are already connected. All right. So this is a three pin fan power cable, this little guy right here. Uh, simply plug that into your motherboard to provide some power. You also have a USB header right there. So that is a standard USB 2.0 header. Uh, if you have an open header on your motherboard, just plug that in. That's how the cooler communicates with your operating system to, uh, to give it stuff like the uh, RPMs and the fan speed. So if you are going to use the software, I'd recommend plugging that in. If you're not gonna use the software, it's, it's less necessary. Uh, since they do have the option of doing either the fan configuration that's already installed or a push-pull configuration, they've given you a couple more uh, three or four pin fan connectors right there. Uh, so you can plug in either three or four pin uh, fans to those. Uh, since it comes with two fans that are permanently attached, you've got those already plugged. And uh, these cables do have little labels on them, kind of telling you what's what. That's power, for example. That's USB, for example. Uh, and then there's your, pretty much your cabling. Okay. Flipping around to this side, we can see the block. And uh, you might notice this is a little bit lower profile than some of the ones you might have seen before, other closed loop coolers. Again, that is because this is really just a block. There is no pump integrated here as well. On the bottom, you can see that it is copper, which is the ideal material for uh, efficiently transferring heat away from a surface and into something else. 
Under, on the other side of this, we have a bunch of tiny, tiny little, uh, little fins that stick out. And basically, the water goes in one side. It's pushed across those fins to the other. It gathers a bunch of heat away from the copper block uh, and then takes it out the other tube over to the radiator where the heat can be dispersed. You will notice that there is some thermal paste that's pre-applied to this, so you can simply drop that on. Just make sure uh, before you're ready to install to keep this little protective cover on. That will make sure you don't get the thermal paste on your hands or whatever. Uh, also, you might notice that the, those little grooves in the side right here, so that's how this thing is currently being held on. Those are the same grooves that you would use to attach this universal mounting plate onto that. It simply pops on, twists a little bit, and locks in place. Also, you got your Antec logo right there, again, uh, that will glow. Uh, it lights up blue by default. It will change color depending on the temperature of the water, uh, or you can use the software to uh, set up a custom color if you just want it to light up and look pretty, rather than actually telling you information like if your water is hot or liquid. It's not strictly water they use in here. They use secret additives. They won't tell us what they are. Okay, the fans, as you can maybe can tell, are currently being held in place by a couple foam pieces, so make sure you remove those, otherwise they won't spin. Uh, nice wide blades, as you can tell, so that's going to give you tons of uh, nice static pressure over the radiator because that is what you want when you're talking about a radiator. They've also done a pretty cool thing which you can really barely see, like right under there. Um, you have the fans themselves, and then, um, Tina, do you think we could maybe zoom in right here real quick? Thank you so much. All right, so underneath there, in between these white blades, you notice there's other blades. You can kind of see that one right there that I'm, I'm kind of scanning over. Those are actually angled in the opposite direction uh, as the fans themselves. And Antec uh, has found that by putting those in there with the uh, fans pushing that air directly down over that, it uh, has improved their static pressure and improved the performance of these, fan, uh, of these coolers as a whole. So uh, another cool design element there that you wouldn't necessarily get if you're just buying uh, even, even, even pressure optimized fans and dropping them onto a radiator. Uh, the pumps, as you can see, are right here. They're pretty substantial. Uh, make sure you have enough uh, vertical height in your case uh, to accommodate these. Um, and actually, speaking of that, I totally neglected to point out something when I was going over the accessories. Tina's nodding her head because she totally saw me do that. Um, I'll come back to that in just a moment, though. Uh, as far as the route that the liquid takes through here, I know it's going to go in or out one of these then through the pump, and then back through, and then through the radiator fins, and then out to the other one. I'm really not sure how it's all routed up in there internally, but um, it's a loop, basically. It goes in one side, out the other. Do bear in mind that these fans are permanently attached, um, so if you do want to remove them, that might be a difficult job uh, in the future. Um, but again, you're probably not going to have need of any other fans besides the ones that they're shipping with these. They're making sure that they're giving you high quality fans right out of the box. And you do have the option to put two more fans on this side. A push-pull configuration will almost always improve the performance uh, of a closed loop cooler like this, or just about any radiator for that matter. So you do have the option to put those right here. Just bear in mind that those fans are pushing air this away, right? that way. So uh, make sure if you put fans on that side that you're orienting them in the same direction so that the fans are not going in opposite directions because that would really kill your performance. Uh, you have a small bit of reservoir on either side. Again, that's just for the water to go through. And then as you can see, uh, the aluminum fin array, which is right in there uh, with all the channels moving through right here, um, which they've kept a little bit more dense. Um, there's still a fair uh, amount of opening in there, as you can see as I'm kind of passing it over. You can see the fans through there. Uh, but again, Antec has optimized this to make sure you're going to get a ton of performance from this unit uh, with the included fans, or then again, particularly if you're going to go uh, with a push-pull configuration by adding a couple more. Okay, this was the uh, little part that I forgot in the accessories, and even though these look like just tiny little strips of metal, I really like this as, a, as an add-on accessory, because one thing that you must always consider when you're purchasing a closed-loop cooler like this is case compatibility. You need a 240 millimeter space to mount the radiator, and then you also need to make sure that you have clearance between wherever you're mounting this and other components in your case. Oftentimes, if you're mounting this at the top of your case, you might come into conflicts with your motherboard, for example. So they've given you these two pieces, which are basically offsets. So um, I'm not sure if I'm lining this up properly, but you should be able to get the idea at least. You would attach that like so. Uh, with screws right there attaching to the radiator, and then that basically gives you offset mounting points here and here. So you can shift the radiator over by uh, probably a centimeter to a centimeter and, half, and a half, uh, which doesn't seem like that much, but in the case where you just barely have enough clearance or barely don't have enough clearance to get this cooler in, it could be the difference between getting it installed and getting everything up and running or having to look for a different case or something like that. So a couple nice add-ons as well right there. 
And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Antec Cooler H201250 240 millimeter closed loop CPU cooler. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or thought it was useful or entertaining or anything like that, leave me some feedback down in the feedback section, a like or a dislike or a comment. Any of those will do. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.